Self-sponsorship is nothing more than a skill worker visa where you get the skill worker visa from your own company uh, to run your own company. This is a follow-up video on my previous self sponsorship video I've created earlier. So I've been receiving a lot of follow-up questions during consultation which I do now and then and there has been quite a few frequently asked questions. So I thought let me create another part of the self sponsorship video to answer all those frequently asked questions just to clear the air and give you more understanding what we mean by self-sponsorship route for the UK visa. So number one question I get to ask is we can't find this category on government website. What do you mean by self-sponsorship? There is no visa on the government website as self-sponsorship. And my response is you are right. <laughs> you are absolutely right. There is no specific immigration category which suggests self-sponsorship. So why do we say that? And the clarification is self-sponsorship is nothing more than a skill worker visa. So it is a part of process of sponsor license and skill worker visa. But the only twist in you get the license for your own company and then you sponsor yourself to run your own company. Hence, is self-sponsorship. I hope it makes sense but just for the sake of clarification one more time. Self-sponsorship is nothing more than a skill worker visa where you get the skill worker visa from your own company uh, to run your own company. So you are sponsoring yourself to run your own company if that was to make sense. So we call it a self-sponsorship visa. There is no category as such on government website but if you of course do search on government website you will definitely find sponsor license and skilled worker visa so it's not very well known or very popular immigration route it's something very brand new and then you might say why is it not so popular because uk government changed the rules in december 2020 i did write about this in an article i was interviewed for in money control so if you search money control and my name Yash Dubal, you will find that article. So I briefly touched upon that subject, why this self sponsorship wasn't popular and why it can be popular now. So I did touch on that subject very briefly in that money control interview I did uh, late last year in 2021. So let me again, uh, you know, touch on that subject. Why was it not popular, but why it can be popular now? Uh, number one reason. So prior December 2020, if you were to be a more than 10% shareholder in a company where you are getting work permit, that means a skill worker visa, previously known as a tier 2 visa, then you had to be paid high earner salary, which is around 160,000 pound a year. That attracts a huge uh, you know, uh, tax liability around 80, 90,000 pound per year. Over the five years period, it might cost around half million pound. So it's a lot of expense if someone is trying to sponsor himself or herself. So it wasn't popular. Now, post December 2020, government has abolished that high earner criteria. So now, even if you are a more than 10% shareholder up, up to 100% shareholder and if you get sponsorship to run your own company you can be paid normal salary which starts from 26,000 pound onwards so the tax liability is a lot less so now I believe from my experience expertise and knowledge it can be a very popular immigration route I hope it makes sense. There is no immigration category as self-sponsorship, but it's very much feasible and it's credible and it's perfect immigration route if it does fit for you. Okay, let, let's pick up on the next question. Why should I apply for self-sponsorship and when should I apply for self-sponsorship? So let me answer that question for you. My first question is, 
why do you want to come to the UK? The normal response I get to this question, and probably that might be one of your reasons, number one, is you want to migrate to the UK for better lifestyle. That includes a sense of safety, security, better education, better health care, so on and so forth. Number two is you want to expand your business to the UK, right? Just, just the betterment of, of your business, the next level of your business, the next level of your professional career. These are the two main reasons I get to hear from majority of clients and whatever is your reason, it's your reason, it's perfectly fine. I like to take the route which is 100% truthful and transparent to meet your need. So whenever I do consultation, I ask one question to my client. Let's assume you don't have any immigration restriction in the UK. If that's true, what would you do in the UK? So if someone is a business person and if they are running, uh, let's say, educational consultancy, they will say, oh, I will run an educational consultancy in the UK. Or if someone is a majority shareholder and running uh, probably a proper IT company, say, so, okay, yeah, I will run an IT company in the UK. Let's say someone is running a, a retail store overseas and they, that's, their, that's, stress, that's their strength, that's their specialism. It can be anything, running a retail store, running an IT company, uh, running an advisory firm, running a school, running a college, running probably a hospital or any business you are running. That's your strength, that's your experience, that's your skill set and that is what probably you want to work upon in the UK when you move to the UK. So my idea is if that is what you want to do, why not just find out an immigration route that helps you to do exactly what you want to do and same time you achieve a better lifestyle which includes not just for yourself but your family too and also earn permanent residency in five years and a British citizenship down the line. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Um, so try and find out. Don't try and pick up an immigration route for the sake of it. Right? That's not healthy option. For an example, um, I've heard people choosing innovator visa route where <laughs> there is no genuine intention of running an innovative business. I heard people choosing a sole representative visa route where they are a majority shareholder just trying to pick the route for the sake of achieving their UK dream. If you don't qualify for sole representative visa, if you are a majority shareholder and if you do not qualify for sole representative visa, if you don't have intention to running an innovative business and you do not genuinely qualify for innovator visa, don't try. And, and explore that option. My humble advice, my humble invitation for you is to choose the immigration route that is a right fit to meet your need, your requirement and same time also serve the purpose for you. So if you don't qualify for sole rep visa, if you don't qualify for innovator visa, then try and explore the sole self-sponsorship immigration route. Self-sponsorship route, as I said, it's very simple. I've explained that in my previous video. Please watch that video. But let me touch upon uh, what's that about. Let's say you want to open educational consultancy in the UK. So step number one, you incorporate a company in the UK. Step number two is get a sponsor license for that business. Step number three is to get a skill worker visa for you to run your own business in the UK. So that's simple three step. Of course, it's not as easy as it sounds. Of course, there is a lot of complex uh, process to go through, the procedure to go through. We can definitely advise you. This is what we have been doing for last 13 years, helping people to get sponsor license and getting skill worker visa. We are specialized in compliance um, and policy and procedure around anything around sponsor license and skilled worker visa, 13 plus years experience. So that says it enough. We are legal 500 multi award winning firm with 4,000 plus client and 1,000 plus reviews. Says it all. Happy to help in case if you need help. But let's go back to again FAQs, frequently asked question. Dealt with the first one. What is this category? Where is it coming from? The number two is, can I get ILR and British citizenship? The answer is yes. After five years of your skill worker visa standard, you get permanent residency if you meet the requirement. And after one more of year of your ILR, that means in, 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 in your OPREX permitted six years, six years period, you, you could qualify for British citizenship. You can bring your family, that means your spouse, 
uh, children under 18 years old you, you know they can come uh, along with you if you want and if you stay in the UK up to 186 days a year right so you are allowed up to 180 days per year uh, absences if you meet this residency requirement you may qualify for ILR which is permanent residency uh, settlement indefinitely to remain in just five years next question can I run any business the answer is yes you can literally run any business of your choice under this sales sponsorship rule next question do I need to invest any minimum amount the answer is no if there is no hard and fast requirement then you might ask me a question, follow-up question. Oh, tell me what is the amount do I need to invest to qualify for this immigration rule? If my answer is with a follow-up question. How much money do you think you may need to run that specific business in the UK? It can be £10,000, it can be £50,000, it can be £500,000 or a million pound. I don't know. I mean, what is your business plan? What is your business idea? It can be a small service based business or it can be as big as a hotel right it can be anything I don't know what is your business plan and business idea so you tell me I mean you are an entrepreneur I guess if you are on this video and you want to run some sort of business in the UK you are running probably similar business overseas so you know the answer roughly roughly approximately how much money would you need to run that similar business model in the UK if you don't know then we can hire a business consultant will prepare a professional business plan uh, they will do market research for you they will do SWOT analysis for you they will also prepare a forecast financial forecast for you they will also pull some figures roughly approximately how much money do you need to invest so we can do that for you on your behalf bring in a, a professional business consultant to prepare a professional business plan for you so that's about investment no hard and fast requirement it can be as low as 20 30 thousand pound to probably half million or a million pound it all depends on your business model and your business idea next question do I need to hire minimum number of employees the answer is no again it's very subjective it's very subjective to your business model your business idea it can be as as less as zero employee 200 employees it's up to you very subjective the next question is what are the complications here what do I need to know to make sure I don't fall foul of this uh, uh, application and I get the, the approval you know uh, as, as, as high as possible uh, chance let me touch upon the challenges here number one is genuineness it cannot be an immigration route just to facilitate your entry if that was to make sense it's still it has to be a genuine business and it has to be a genuine uh, a job role um, and, and and then you might ask me a question how can we prove that if it's a brand new company how can we prove it's active trading company and it's genuine business if I'm just trying to sponsor myself how can I prove it's a genuine why cannot government think I'm just trying to make up things Oh, okay no problem chill we will figure it out it's simple what I love about the UK and the UK immigration rule it's very rational the UK government is very rational um, very reasonable right the UK immigration rules and the UK government is very reasonable and very rational and this is what I love the most about being in the UK being an UK immigration rule lawyer so as long as you are rational and reasonable there is a highly likely chance you will be successful in what you want to achieve not just in immigration in every area of the life being in the UK that's my experience living in the UK being a migrant myself I found the UK as the most rational and reasonable society and I love the most about that that specific uh, point I love the most about the UK so be it UK immigration okay let's go back to the point how can I prove it's a genuine business active trading company so when you set up any business any company if you have a genuine intention to run that business that's good enough for it to be active and trading company it's about intention do you have intention to for an example I had a consultation with a Pakistani client 
uh, very well to do family uh, very well known family i would say in pakistan they approached me for a consultation they wanted to set up a e-commerce business they had some experience running e-commerce business abroad and now they wanted to set up something similar in the uk uh, the person wanted to run the business was would be a majority shareholder um, i said okay self sponsorship is the route to go for i advised them how about you set up in you know your e-commerce uh, company first uh, bring over the investment you think is right for you first and then we get the sponsor license and we'll get you skilled worker visa they ask me same question how can i prove it's a genuine business so okay fine do you really genuinely want to run this business in the uk yes absolutely if they really genuine uh, really and genuinely wanted to run the business in the uk that's good enough so if there is a genuine intention we can understand that and with that in mind we can get a sponsor license and now the next question is very easy to answer how about it's a genuine job role it's a genuine sponsorship very easy if it's your brainchild the business idea is your brainchild and if you have the right skill qualification and experience because of your previous um, uh, experience about this business then it's highly likely you will meet the genuineness requirement you're supposed to be here to run your business no right or wrong it's your business you're supposed to be here to run your business that makes you the right fit for the job role of a ceo or the director to run the business and for that reason i don't think there is anything sinister about you getting sponsorship to run your own business it's very rational and it's very reasonable trust me it is and we can make it work for you if you are interested if you are not sure uh, if you can't do it yourself or if you don't find a right uh, advisor or consultant to help you with this and or if you just want us to deal with that please contact us and we'll do we'll provide you with a complete handholding support a step by step guidance and help you achieve your dream last few question two more question timeline and and the cost how long does it take uh, okay fine to get the sponsor license it takes around 6 to 8 weeks and to get skill worker visa it takes 4 weeks and it includes a lot of uh, liaison with yourself with the government and everything but the most challenging part in the entire process is to set up a company and get the business bank account for your company that's the most challenging part so sometimes it might take a, a month or two to get that then let's say another one and a half month to get two months to get sponsor license another month to get the skill worker visa so all in all we are talking about 5 months approximately maybe 6 months that's a reasonable timeline from the day we start the process to, till the date you get the visa for yourself and your family maybe 5 to 6 months time that's reasonable but we still get to move fast we can't just simply sit down and relax we have to move fast you know if we just progress in an optimum speed level we might be able to achieve your objective within around 5 to 6 months time so that's the timeline cost the home office fees for a skill worker visa for 5 years is around 6 and 1/2000 pound around 6 and 1/2000 pound plus or minus uh, here and there for main applicant and around 4 and 1/2000 pound per dependent this is straight 5 years visa and after 5 years you get permanent residency we charge our fees if you want to know about our fees um, please do contact my office and 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 one of my colleague will advise you uh, on the cost we charge So that's my humble approach again one more time to clear the air, clear the doubts around the self sponsorship route. If you have any follow up question, why don't you just drop that question into the comment section below? So I'll prepare another video, another follow up video to answer every question you might have around self sponsorship. So I hope th this makes sense, a lot more sense now. Um and I'm happy to answer any more question. Please 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 drop that into the comment section below now. Any question you might just drop it in the comment section right now. If you like this content, please like my video. It helps a lot to spread the content, spread the awareness, spread the education. Whether you hire our services or not, it doesn't matter. We want to spread the knowledge, spread the education. It will benefit a lot more people. This is a free education free knowledge 
um, just share share with your friends and family like this video I do develop a lot of content likewise if you like this content please do subscribe to my channel so you get to know about any content I develop in future straight uh, as a notification to you so please subscribe my channel right now any question drop that question into the comment section below now if you like the content please press the like button thank you ever so much and all the very best for your UK migration application.